Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Again, welcome to the new, uh, the, the, the new order, the new normal. The um, topic to tonight, I thought we'd pick on something that's uh, a little interesting, uh, the kippah. Um, which the kippah, which in Hebrew means a covering, uh, some people call it a skullcap, or as known in the Yiddish term, a uh, yarmulke. Uh, you don't hear the R, most people call it a yarmulke. And um, it stands for Yira Malka, that I will see the king. That's what the yarmulke stands for. Now, it is a head covering worn by about one third of Jewish Israeli men. It is not one of the 613 commandments, rather, it is a custom which has evolved through time as a sign of our recognition that there is someone above us who watches our every move. As it states in the Talmud, cover your head in order that the fear of heaven may be upon you. After the Star of David, we call the Mug and David, the Kippah is probably the, one of the most recognizable symbols of Jewish identity. You know, when I was a kid growing up in the 50s, wearing a yarmulke was not as common as it is today. There were many times that I had an escort chasing me home because I was wearing one. I vividly remember once being confronted by a very big guy. I couldn't run, and I thought that I was in big trouble. But he wasn't interested in beating me up. He just wanted to know where I got my beanie, as he referred to it. Now, even though wearing a kippah is not a Torah commandment, it falls under the category of a custom, and we have a precept in Jewish law that a custom breaks the law. So it does carry with it a significant, a major significance. I find it interesting that when the reform movement was launched in the 19th century, the head covering at prayer was actually abolished. This became a mark of distinction for the movement. However, today, in many reform synagogues, <clears throat> head covering is now the norm. People like tradition. There is a law in the book of Leviticus, in Vayikra, in the portion of Achri Mos, 18.3, which states, Do not follow any of their customs. Because of this statement, religious Jews have taken many have certain customs at different times, so as not to imitate the non-Jews. In Europe, it was customary for non-Jews to wear black shoelaces in their shoes, so Jews would wear color shoelaces. When Christians pray, they clasp their hands together as a sign of submission to God. <clears throat> Whereas when we pray, we place our feet together as our total submission to our God. Now the uncovering of the head became the uncovering of the head became associated with church etiquette and therefore became repugnant. A Christian, as a sign of respect, will take his hat off in the church and many other places as well, whereas a religious Jew will keep his hat on. The worship or even to go about with an uncovered head was regarded as an imitation of the Christians and an act of irreverence to God Almighty. On more than one occasion, I've been asked to remove my hat in a restaurant or a club. I remember one time that I refused and I was asked to leave the premises. Now, the 17th century authority of David Halevi Siegel, the Taz, suggested the reason for wearing a kippah was to distinguish Jews from their non-Jewish counterparts, especially while praying. It was his opinion that wearing a kippah is required by Jewish law. The Chidah, Reb Chaim David Yosef Azuli, <coughs> excuse me, held that wearing a head covering is what we call a midot chasidot an additional measure of piety. In response, the former Sephardic rabbi, chief rabbi of Israel, Avadya Yosef, ruled that the kippah should be worn to show affiliation with the religiously observant community. In later generations, it became the accepted custom for all religious Jews, Jewish men, to wear a kippah at all times, in fact, even when they sleep. In Talmudic times, the practice of wearing a head covering was reserved for men of great stature. This may be why in the Catholic Church, it is only the bishops, cardinals, and popes who really wear head coverings that resemble a kippah. Bishops wear the color purple, cardinals wear the color red, and the pope, a white 
keep up of sorts. As we know, many of the customs in Christianity have their origin in Judaism. They call their head covering zikaros, which in Italian is a small gourd, kind of a pumpkin, since the panels that are sewn together resemble the dome of a pumpkin or a gourd. Now this may be why Haredim, the Jewish ultra-Orthodox Jews, only wear a black kippah, not colored. Not only are religious men required to cover their heads during prayers, there are many ultra-Orthodox sects that, that require their followers to wear two coverings on their heads before they recite or fulfill <clears throat> any religious requirement. They will not even walk Dalet Amot, six cubits, six feet, without a covering, perhaps four cubits, excuse me, without a covering on their heads. As it states in the Code of Jewish Law, the Shulchan Aruch, or Achaim 2.6, a man may not walk four cubits with his head uncovered, even under a roof. And according to the Rambam, Maimonides, Jewish law dictates that a man is required to cover his head during prayer. A story told in the Talmud, more in Shabbos 156b, where a Chaldean astrologer told Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak's mother, your son will be a thief. Now, based on that statement, <clears throat> she did not allow him to ever uncover his head. She said to her son, cover your head so that the fear of heaven will be upon you always and pray for divine mercy. He really didn't know why she had said that to him. But one day, the Talmud says he was sitting and studying beneath a palm tree that did not belong to him, and his cloak fell off his head. He lifted his eyes and saw the palm tree, and he suddenly was overcome with an impulse, and he climbed up on the tree and detached a bunch of dates with his teeth. Apparently, he had an inborn inclination to steal, a kleptomaniac, kleptomaniac but was unable to overcome that inclination with proper, probably what was able to overcome that inclination with proper education and prayer, again, wearing a kippah. It also stated in 118b in the Tractate of Shabbat, Rav Huna Bar Rav Yeshua said, <clears throat> may I receive my reward because I never walked four cubits with my head uncovered. This theme is also found in the Tractate Kedusha in 31a where it states the reason for him covering his head was because the divine presence is above my head constantly. In the same tractate 29b, it states that Rav Chista was praising Rav Hamnuna to Rav Huna. So Rav Huna said to Rav Chista, the next time that he comes, bring him to meet me. When he, when he came, Rav Huna noticed that he wasn't wearing a head covering. So he asked him, what is the reason that you are not wearing a head covering? And he said, he answered that he wasn't married yet. So it would seem, based on Rashi, that it was customary in those days for only married men to wear a head covering, much like religious women today who cover their hair only after marriage. Now, the religious obligation for a married woman to cover her head traces its origin to the Sota ritual. The Sota ceremony tests the fidelity of a woman who is accused of adultery by her husband. And according to the Torah, she is taken to the temple where the priest who administers the ritual uncovers or unbraids the accused woman's hair as part of the humiliation that precedes the ceremony. Maimonides, the Rambams, does not include hair covering in his list, again, as I mentioned, of the 613 commandments. On the other hand, the Zohar, according to Kabbalah, further entrenches the tradition by describing the mystical importance of women making sure that not a single strand of hair is exposed. You know, there's a story told in the Talmud Yuma 47a about a woman who had seven sons and all of them served as high priest. She was asked, in what merit was she blessed to have such sons? She replied that even the walls of her house never saw her hair. You know, today the kippah has also become a fashion statement. Many of the modern Orthodox Jews wear <clears throat> different styles and colors to complement what they are wearing or where they are going. They may wear a certain type of keep if they are attending a formal occasion, function other, another if they are going about their daily lives. It has also become a form of advertising. You see keep out with the name of individuals, sports teams, institutions, and artistic designs. 
You know, on one of my trips to Israel, <clears throat> I wanted to purchase a kippah. And so I went into a store and I was surprised by the conversation that I had with the salesperson. I really never gave much thought to the different styles of kippah. I just thought that it was a matter of taste, you know, much like clothing. I didn't realize that the style, the size, and even the material of the kippah that you wore made a statement to the world as to what your religious and possibly your political leanings are. I was educated by the salesperson that the kippah that a Jew wears tells a great deal about that person and their religious and political views. Kippot come in several basic styles, with some favored more by particular Jewish subgroups than others. You know, I found an article written by Michael Lipka, an editorial manager of a religion, religious at uh, PEW Research Center. He writes about the differences between Israeli men and their kippot. There are basically four types of kippot. There's the large black, small black, black crocheted and crocheted with pattern or color. There are those who wear also fedoras, kind of a hat, and those Hasidic groups who wear a strimal, a round fur hat. Now, among Israeli men <clears throat> who say they usually wear a large black fabric kippah, a majority identify as Haredi, also known as ultra-Orthodox Jews. Most of those who wear a black crocheted or knitted kippah say they are Masati, or traditional Jews. Those who wear a small black fabric kippah, as well as colored or patterned crocheted kippot, are usually connected with those modern religious Jews who are referred to as dati, or modern Orthodox Jews. Among those Israeli men who do not usually wear coverings, about three quarters are Chiloni, secular Jews, and about a quarter are Masarati, traditional Jews. Now, the ma vast majority of Haredi and Dati men wear a yarmulke of some kind or some kind of head covering in public. Some Haredim prefer a fedora or a strimal. The Sarati men are really more divided. About 42% routinely wear a head covering, and about 57 do not. Virtually no Chilunim wear a religious head covering. Now, wearing a certain type of kippah makes a statement about one's religious identity. In Israel, certain types of kippot can indirectly be strong clues about some of the wearer's political views. In fact, the term kippah, seruga, knitted kippah, is sometimes used to describe religious Zionists, observant Jews who see the Jewish people as religiously entitled to the Holy Land of Israel. Among the men who wear colored or pattern knitted kippot, a vast majority say that, Zion, that they term Zionist describes them very accurately. By contrast, most of those who wear a large black fabric kippah say Zionist label does not describe them accurately. This group is made up of mostly Haredim, some of who have long been ambivalent about the Jewish state. The majority of those who wear a colored or pattern knitted or crocheted kippah agree with this statement. Arabs should be expelled or transferred out of Israel. They say that a peaceful coexistence between the Israelis and an independent Palestinian state is not possible. Likewise, about 7 in 10 men who wear a black crocheted kippah agree that Arabs should be expelled or transferred and that a two-state solution is impossible. Now, when it comes to political ide ideology, most Israeli Jewish men who wear black crocheted kippot or a colored or patterned crocheted kippah say that they are on the political right. Meanwhile, most Jewish men who wear a small black fabric kippah identify, identify <clears throat> as political centrist, as do most Israeli men who do not wear a head covering at all. Among those who do not wear a head covering at all, only 12% describe themselves is being on the political left. Still a small minority, but much bigger than the virtually non-existent share of men who do not wear kippot to identify with the left. Traditionally, only Jewish men wore kippot. However, in modern times, <clears throat> some women have chosen to wear a kippah as an expression of their Jewish identity or as a form of religious expression. So the obvious question that arises is why don't women have an obligation to wear a kippah? 
There are different reasons given <clears throat> based on the concept that men wear a kippah to remind themselves there is a God above them. Women are more spiritual than men for a variety of reasons. <clears throat> Excuse me, and therefore do not need a constant reminder of their connection to God and their obligation to serve Him. Among, uh, pardon me, according to Hasidus, the origin of a woman's soul is from a much higher world than a man's. Even the origin of a woman's physical being was on a much higher plane than man. Man was created from the dust of the earth, a lifeless mannequin. It was not until God blew into his nostrils the breath of life that man became the crown jewel of creation. Woman, on the other hand, was created by taking a limb from man's body and creating Chava. When God created man, he consulted with the angels. Not so with the creation of woman. Her creation was God's desire alone. He consulted with no one. Now the fact is that if a woman, it, was the, it is the woman who carries the fetus in her body for nine months and then gives birth to a living being, in reality making her a true partner with God. A woman who has given birth to a child knows, knows that there is a God in this world. She felt God's presence inside of her body daily. Man, on the other hand, is only a spectator to this amazing miracle. Men are aroused by sight and women by touch. This fact makes men the initiator in marital relations, which also makes them more susceptible to sin. This is another reason as to why men have an obligation to pray three times a day and also why they are required to keep all 613 commandments. In, a, in addition, women are exempt from all positive commandments that have a time factor connected to them. A man's spiritual battery, so to speak, is smaller than a woman's, and needs to be recharged constantly, hence prayer three times a day. Women by nature are more refined and modest. In the United States today, it wasn't, pardon me, United States, it wasn't until World War II that women started to wear pants as they were drafted into the workforce. Also, the women's lib movement may have helped women financially, but in reality, it really brought a woman down to a man's level. A woman is a true lover. Man, on the other hand, is a true animal. As the Talmud states, a woman is the Ateris Balo, the crown of her husband a true jewel. This also may be why nursery, kindergarten, and early grade school teachers are for the most part women. We want our children to be educated not only with knowledge but also in matters of refinement and decency, traits that come naturally to the feminine gender. When one wears a kippah, especially in public, they are making a statement. In reality, it may be compared to a man wearing a wedding ring. It tells the world that he has chosen to enter in a sacred bond of marriage with one woman to the exclusion of all others. Marriage in Judaism is called Kedushin, which comes from the word Kadosh, holy or spiritually elevated. Through marriage, a man and a woman have entered into an exclusive, elevated relationship, sanctified by God Almighty. But the same can be said about wearing a kippah. It is a statement that one is Jewish, and has committed themselves to an exclusive relationship with God Almighty, a relationship which formally began with the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, where God, the groom, entered into a marriage of sorts with the children of Israel, the bride. The wearing of a kippah serves as a sort of symbol of our acceptance of that commitment to a lifelong relationship. Divorce is not an option, neither for us nor for God. So I believe that the wearing of a kippah can be compared to the wearing of tzitzit, the fringes. The verse in the Torah that tells us to wear tzitzit says that by wearing them, isim oto, and you will see them. Even though the word oto as them is alluding to the tzitzit, the word actually means, oto means him. That by our wearing our tzitzit, we connect with God Almighty as our creator. So by wearing our kippah, we connect with God in the level of kedushin, matrimony, an act of humility showing that we acknowledge that there is a God above us and we are honored 
to serve him. This elevates us more than anything that we can say or do. We are not only talking the talk. When we wear a kippah, we are walking the walk. And with that commitment, may we help to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sekenu quickly and in our time. Let me thank you again for attending. And um, we've done quite a few of these lectures, kind of getting t tough to figure out the topics. So if anyone has anything they would like to know about, hear about, learn about, please, um, the, at the bottom of the, we have the um, email accounts. So you can send us a suggestion. I'd be more than happy to see what I can do. Again, thank you very much for attending. God bless. Stay happy. Stay safe. And stay um, happy, safe, and healthy. There you go. <laughs> God you bless you all. Have a great Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Oh, by the way, enjoy Thanksgiving. <laughs>